Hi, everyone. This is Paul Casey, Campbell Karate Hall of Fame. This is our educational video series. And with us today is Muhammad Tabatabai, a senior master of the arts in Campbell Karate. He also is proficient and he teaches also a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. His website is called American Campbell Jiu Jitsu.com. And we're very excited to have him here. So, Muhammad, how are you? I'm doing great. I'd like to say hello to you and everybody else that can hear me. You're wonderful. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about things that are going on in your life. Uh, we're going to go a little bit of a history lesson. The purpose of the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame educational video is simple. It's to reintroduce members of the Hall of Fame to the viewing audience and why they're members of the Hall of Fame. Most events, uh, awards events and such, you receive an award, you put it on the wall, and nobody ever talks about you anymore. This is more relevant because I want to make sure that people understand people like you who still goes and does seminars, still does web broadcasting. You can find a lot of these people um, uh, that would love to be uh, here to watch, uh, and they see you from YouTube if they're from, say, a different country or uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, Muhammad, let's start real quickly. Let's go back and talk about your history, how you got in the martial arts, and you can talk about it. So go ahead, sir. Let, let's not go too far back because I'm just a teenager, man. <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't be adding years to me. Anyways, uh, um, it goes back to West LA school where I started there. Uh, uh, Larry Tatum was the uh, senior instructor at that time, but uh, we had a lot of good black belts there. Uh, Bernie Bernheim, Jamie Muse, uh, Lex Sanson Brennan as my senior, and um, uh, Johnny Corrigan, and uh, a lot of the guys that, that were uh, Brown and Blackwells that we were training. So uh, we just uh, kind of grew up and started training. Yeah. What brought you to the West LA school, though? Well, you know, I was in high school and I was interested in studying martial arts. And at that time, there was like uh, uh, three, four schools. Heel, Cho had a Taekwondo school. Bang Su Han had a Hapkido uh, school. And um, um, so I kind of went and checked them out. And then one of my friends in uh, high school, Nasser, he said, they, I think at that time, it was like a purple belt at the Mr. Parker school. He goes... Uh, you know, that's what I'm studying, American Kempo at Parker System, and come check it out. So I went and saw a demonstration, and I go, oh, this is cool. So I just like the uh, movements and the motion, and uh, so uh, got started. When you, what, when you first went into the school, I'm guessing West L.A., what was your first yeah. day like? First day, you know, I... Got a gi and, uh, you know, it was the introductory, you know, going like uh, two, three introductory lessons and then uh, you started the group classes and then that was it. I mean, I, I started it and just never stopped, you know, um, just fell in love with it and just continued training. Who was your first teacher? Well, like I said, Larry, Larry Tatum was the, uh, the uh, senior instructor at, the, at Mr. Parker's school. And then, uh, uh, like I said, I was learning from anybody and everybody. One of the things was uh, that, that it, I, I didn't like the idea of putting my belt, putting the knot on the side. So, uh, you know, they, I was a white belt and a yellow belt. And, the, you know, they, they go like, well, you cannot put the uh, knot of the belt in the middle. You got to put it to the side unless if you're teaching. So then what, what happened, you know, uh, I said, oh, okay, if that's the case. So <laughs> I was a yellow belt and I grab a white belt and I'm just going over stuff with him. And if some of the brown and black girls walk on the mat and go like, hey, Mohammed, you, you got to put your knot on the side. I go, sir, I'm teaching. I was told if you're teaching, you could leave the, uh, leave the belt in the middle. So uh, that's how it started. And uh, just... Um, continue to uh, learn and train and teach. And you know, when it comes to teaching, the best part of it is uh, you go through repetition, it just makes you better. I see. Yeah. What's the best lesson you learned as a teacher teaching a student? Um, one of the main things that I got from Mr. Parker was just an open mind. 
you, you know, in, in, in even in advanced classes that I was teaching, he shows a technique and, you know, uh, you pick it up and you learn the, uh, the concept and what he's trying to teach in that technique. Then if I had to do certain things a certain way that just fits me, then that's what I do. And I, I think the, the, the best thing was just having an open mind to uh, uh, get the motion and everything, but at the same time, do it the way that works for you and your body style. And that's, that's the main thing about the, what the, Mr. Parker was talking about in, uh, in American Kempo, just keep an open mind. What was the most difficult thing you, uh, you learned from teaching? Um, I don't know. Sometimes maybe you, you, you're expecting your students to uh, maybe move a little bit better. Your expectation goes a little bit high. And uh, then you got to kind of like hold yourself back and go like, okay, wait a minute. You got to be patient. And uh, as long as uh, they uh, get better step by step, then uh, you, they're on the right track. Uh, I don't think I ever had like a bad experience or, uh, you know, anything like that. Teaching was always, uh, it's always been fun. Okay. Uh, how many years have you been teaching? Uh, uh, like I said, you know. Uh, when, you're, when you had a mustache, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you a story about that mustache. I was doing a uh, uh, fight choreography for a TV series uh, down in San Diego. and. Um, one of the uh, actors, uh, you know, the, the stunt coordinator and the uh, director were going like, well, get Muhammad to double him because he had to do a, like a backfall into a, like a snake pit. And uh, they said, uh, okay, so they put a jacket on me and they were shooting over my shoulder and they go, uh, well, Muhammad, you got to shave your mustache. I go, you don't even see my face. You're shooting over my shoulder. And the stunt coordinator comes and goes like, how about a uh, $800 adjustment? I go, man, for that, I will shave my mustache. <laughs> so I shaved the mustache, and after that, you know, uh, it's, they're like, hey, you look good without it. Uh, that was it. That was this. Everybody was mistaking you for Frank Trejo at that point, yeah. right? <laughs> Frank, God bless him. God How bless was your relationship him. with him? Um, he was my senior. He was, uh, he was my friend. You know, we had fun uh, traveling and teaching together. And, uh, you know, it's just sad that he's gone. But uh, I, had, I had great times with him, uh, just uh, chit-chatting, traveling, and also uh, learning from him. So uh, it, it was good. We did that demonstration, I think, back in 88 or 89 at the Internationals which I paired off with him, and uh, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Can you share fun. one of your personal stories with, with us about with Frank? Either It doesn't have to be karate-related, but it is actually karate-related. We were flying to go to uh, uh, New Jersey to uh, um, teach seminars at uh, Tom uh, Lavarco in New Jersey. So I'm flying <laughs> with, with Frank and... Uh, so uh, they, we're flying to Atlanta, and he goes, uh, you know, Frank, he's wearing that T-shirt, his jeans, the shorts, and then he's got the socks coming up right below his knees, and, you know, and he's got these dark glasses on. And uh, so uh, we go s seat in, a, in the middle where there's like four or five seats, and he goes like, okay, Muhammad, just sit down and relax and open your arms and your legs and just take a whole bunch of space. So... If somebody's walking that way, you know, maybe they go sit somewhere else instead of sitting next to us. I go, okay. So people are walking and the guy's looking at his ticket and going like, I think that's my seat, but I don't want to sit there. So they move, go somewhere else. And it was great. Then we had the flight going from uh, uh, Atlanta to New Jersey and it was a small plane. So Frank sits down and he's sitting in front of me, just like two seats, aisle and another two seats, small plane. So uh, he sits down and then it comes this guy that's even bigger than Frank. <laughs> and he's, he's sitting right next to Frank Trejo and I'm going, I go, God help us. So that was a, uh, that was a nice trip. We had a lot of fun. Is there any of the seniors that you had a chance to, to work out with that you would truly admire you could share a story with us? Uh, 
like I said, at, at the uh, West LA school, um, um, obviously beside LA, there were a lot of uh, black girls there. And uh, especially like Friday nights, uh, that there was no class, it was just an open workout. We all get together and put pads on and fight. So um, there, were, there were some guys that come in and we train. I mean, I would learn from anything, anybody and everybody, even to this day. Um, so there were guys like, um, like I said, uh, Lex Sansenbrenner, uh, Jimmy Mews, Johnny Corgan, Bernie Bernheim, and, uh, and then some of the other guys, uh, Nasser, Masu, Shane, and, uh, you know, these guys that uh, uh, we just uh, put pads on and move around and fight and have a good time. Yeah. Did you always, did you always spar when you were over there in West L.A.? Um, we always sparred, I mean, uh, um, because, uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to say that, like, Larry was more like a, a technician and, uh, you know, but we needed to just put pads on and move around and fight. And sometimes, uh, if, uh, uh then we had some of the guys that come from outside, uh, you know, and Friday nights, uh, which there was no class time. And uh, we just, we, we put pads on and spar and fight. So you, met with fr you met on Friday nights, like the Friday night class. I, I see Steve. Yeah, like I said, it, it, this, was, this was a group of guys that, uh, you know, uh, if there was even some guy that come from outside because uh, there was no, like, a group class for the school. So because I was one of the instructors there, I obviously had the key to the academy. So we just do an open workout. Sometimes we'd be there till uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock or till midnight and just doing stuff. Did all the instructors uh, spar? Did they, did they participate or not? Um, some of us, some of the ones that wanted to just move around and fight and, you know, they sh show up and, uh, you know, um, we just uh, have fun. Go what about, well, okay, let's move on. What's the craziest thing you ever saw? at the school craziest thing i ever saw i um it was a thursday night that mr parker uh, uh well one of the things was like we were close to uh, va hospital so sometimes you get you get some of these guys that just walk in you know um i don't know if you ever you were ever at mr parker's west la school the one that was at the corner of santa monica and sepulveda and so there was like a lobby and then you kind of walk in office to the left and you walk in and then the training area was to the right. So um, I was there and then there was no classes and stuff. And then, you know, sometimes these people come in from VA hospital and God bless them if they were a little bit off and uh, you come in and you see the guy just, uh, you know, with his forehead on the floor, like he's praying or something, or they come in and walk on the mat, start throwing kicks and stuff. I mean, it, it, this was this was some of the uh, craziest stuff that every now and then we see. But one night it was um, it was the uh, advanced class, and uh, uh, Mr. Parker. I mean, usually we get rid of the uh, uh, lower belts, uh, so because for advanced class it was brown and black belts only. So come eight o'clock, we tell them okay, change and get out, and uh, then brown and black belts be on the mat. So I usually go up front and keep a space for Mr. Parker, so he pull up. And the uh, four or five freeway, like you exit off and you make a right turn and you go like maybe just like a hundred yards or something. And then boom, the school was right there. So uh, me and a few of the black girls were standing outside uh, ready for Mr. Parker to show up. And um, I don't know, he must have cut in front of somebody in, in the freeway and he didn't even know it. So <laughs> he comes pulling right in the parking lot and right and he pulls up right in front of the uh, academy as soon as he pulls out he gets out of his car and then this other car just pulled up fast right behind him in the in the parking lot and parked behind his car and the guy came out of his car and he is he opened the door he's pissed off and start cussing he starts saying things that uh, like uh, Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker opened the door and he came out with his gi on and his belt around his neck. So I kind of walked up towards him to say hello. These things like happened like in five seconds, 10 seconds. And 
The guy comes out, he's cussing, this and that, and then Mr. Parker turned around looking at him. They're looking at him. The guy's looking at Mr. Parker and looking at the uh, brown and black belt standing in front of the academy, and he just froze. <laughs> and he got right back in his car and took off, and that was a funny situation. I'm going, sir, what did you do? He goes, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But I'm sure he must have cut in front of him or something. I know that. Chuck Sullivan and a few others would know. Did you ever ride with Mr. Parker? Yeah, and, uh, you know. Uh, that answers the question. <laughs> I rode with him from Pasadena. Frank and Jim Mitchell, we went up to uh, the Flores Brothers up in Oxnard. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't want to lie. <laughs> oh, Lord. Still, you just changed lane and you cut somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It is. Okay, so you get ready. You're uh, progressing in your studies in the Kempo world. Yeah. And you're getting ready to test for your black belt. Tell us about it. Testing for first degree black? Yes, sir. Oh, that was an amazing night. I mean, I, I don't know. I put on that black belt and I felt like I could I could drop an elephant with a punch. It it's uh it it's a it was just a it was just a great feeling. You know, you remember uh, who was on your board? Um, and do you remember who you tested with? Uh, not to be honest with you, I uh, I don't know. There's some pictures here and there, but uh, two elephants, right? It, it's it's some of the guys from the uh, some of the guys from the uh, obviously from West LA school. Some of the brown and black belts. Uh, obviously, Mr. Parker was on the board. Larry was on the board. Uh, I don't know if I want to say Jerry Lightman and uh, um, uh, Bernie Bernheim and some of these guys, maybe uh, Ernie George. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I don't remember, but it, it was it was a uh, it was a great night. It was a great night. What was your relationship like with Mr. Parker? Um, it, it it was it was a uh, it was a good relationship. I mean, I, I was a uh, uh, um, one of the instructors at his academy. I was uh, and uh, one of the uh, one of the comments that he he made to me is like, uh, you know, you're always pretty straightforward with uh, you know with with things, saying saying what you need to say and. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a great relationship. I mean, uh, you know, because he left us too early, you know, sometimes you go like, I wish I would have spent more time or I wish, but, um, Hey, it was a great experience to be at his school and train and study and, uh, you know, learn from him and everybody else there. Hey, tell us about how you got invited to be in the demo at the internationals and what was that? In, what did that entail? I mean, it was a, of preparation was it improv well just explain yeah i mean uh, um mainly mr parker and then the uh, you know rest of us we came up with some ideas that uh, how we're going to do it and what we're going to do and then um, uh, you know it was just saying like okay let's let's uh, pair off and uh, we work uh, some techniques on each other back and forth uh, you know if it's inside the punch outside the punch this and that i mean uh, we we just put it together and did some uh, did some practicing and at the day of the uh, international I think the day before and the the same day uh, just uh, outside like in the lobby in a private area we went over it a few times and we just got out there and had fun. I see. Did he give you any direction on uh, on what techniques should be? No, I guess, uh, you know, because the guys were at the level that he's like, uh, okay, you know, if you want to do a technique outside right, inside right, punch or left punch or kick or this and that or weapon, you know, uh, just just do what you want to do. So, um, you know, I, I think people are going to shine when they're uh, doing uh, techniques and stuff that they're comfortable with. How about Mr. Parker at the end? Obviously, he would always conclude that. Well, he did as far as I remember. Uh, did you guys tell him what you were going to do or was it, was there any preparation on that? 
you know, I wasn't going to tell him what you're going to do. It's, it's just like, okay, let's just pray and keep your fingers crossed that uh, you're not going to get uh, banged around too hard. But, uh, you know, hey, um, attack. You want me to kick, punch this, that, you know, let's, uh, let's just uh, move for the man and make him shine. It was interesting because at the end of the one demo that you're in, you and Frank are together. Yeah. We'll they attack him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we, we, we put it off and, and say, okay, I'm going first or second, or how's that going? <laughs> well, you know, Frank is going to go, he's going to say like, okay, I'm going to go first. But when it comes to it, you probably push me, go like, go. <laughs> uh, it, it, was just a, it was just a great night. It was just a great night. Yeah, well, yeah. It, the beauty of it is it's been captured and it can be revisited forever. Yeah, our social media, which is amazing. Now, I know that you use social media to reach out to students and teach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, you know, teaching has been anything and everything for me. I mean, it, it's been, uh, I've had my own academy uh, for uh, uh, 30 years and uh, uh, 11, 12 years at Mr. Parker's school. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to study martial arts and maybe be, get a black belt. But then I, I started teaching and I was told that, hey, you're a good instructor. So I opened up a school and uh, that's um, that's what's been happening. It's, it's just, uh, you know, good Well, there's stuff. two questions there then. You taught the original curriculum. Did you change any of that? And have you added to the curriculum, your own personal insights? I, I, I teach, uh, I teach Muhammad Tabatabai's Kempo Karate with the understanding that I've gone through the years from Mr. Parker and anybody and everybody within, this, within the system. But uh, I mean, basically what I teach is uh, Ed Parker's American Kempo Karate. And uh, because, uh, when I was, uh, uh, you know, in Iran, before I, I came to U.S. back in 77, I was uh, like 15 years old. And back in Iran, I did a little bit of wrestling and played a lot of soccer and everything. So I started Kempo. And then, uh, you know, back in, uh, I want to say, what was it, like uh, um, 2008? Uh, yeah, it's been 12, 13 years. That they, you know, just... Uh, start the studying jujitsu i mean i was studying jujitsu here and there getting together with uh, some of the uh, uh, brown and black belts within jujitsu and training but then i start studying it uh, you know as a student going to uh, a gracie academy and uh, studying with hero and hannah gracie and then after that with john jock machado and todd nathanson and those guys so um um and I, I just picked out jujitsu because, uh, you know, it, it, uh, um, it adds, uh, it's just a great complement to uh, Kempo. I mean, they mix, mix, uh, mixing both of them together is just uh, such a, uh, it's, it's good stuff because there are certain things that um, it's not within Kempo. You, you, don't, you don't see it. The answers are not there. And my Kempo has gotten so much better since I've been studying jujitsu. I see. Well, let me ask you this. There are other instructors out there that profess the use of ground attacks and whatnot. They encourage that. Is that something that you do as well, or is it just something that you use for in addition to the base? No, it's, I, I, I teach pure jujitsu. I mean, the jujitsu techniques are Brazilian jujitsu. It's, it's not the techniques that the, I created, and I teach the uh, pure American Kempo Karate. And uh, uh, you want to say my version of it? I mean, everybody, you do Kempo, you do your version of Kempo. Um, and uh, just the, uh, and then how you could just mix it together. And after a while, that studying and teaching it, uh, you know, uh, they, they just come together. So, uh, um, you know, it's, it's like if, if, if it's something that's necessary to me, then I like to study it and I, I like to learn and I like to know more about it. 
because some of the Kempo practitioners, they, they go like, well, we do stand up and striking. And if, uh, if somebody wants to get close to us and we're going to, uh, you know, strike and use Kempo and keep them away and this and that, I'm going like, there's no way you could do that unless you understand what the judo guy going to do to you or a wrestler or a jujitsu guy going to do to you. I mean, uh, these guys, uh, they, they could, obviously it's up to the individual, but people could close the gap on you so fast that, you know, uh, you want to try and like do some striking and everything. You find that they got your legs and you're on your back. So um, you got to know their game to be able to uh, have some answers for it when you're in that situation. Well, at what point do you introduce the jujitsu, or do you basically start with the premise of Kempo first and then add that later? No, no. It, it, it's like if, if we start Kempo and we start with some of the basic fundamentals and, uh, you know, some stances and punches and blocks and foot maneuvers and strikes, and we go to some of the techniques, same thing with the jujitsu. You, you learn some of the basic uh, uh, stuff on the ground. If it's, uh, you know, uh, shrimping and this and that and just and and start working techniques okay i mean i mean when a student comes into you and has no history or basis uh for martial arts where do you begin uh like i said you could you could start with you we start with some basic fundamentals and then we go into some techniques i mean like let's say if it's within kempo and you start learning your delayed sword and captured twigs and deflecting hammer and some of that stuff and so we go into uh, some of the jujitsu basic fundamentals and then you start learning your uh, uh, you know double leg takedowns and bridge and roll and you know just clinching and closing the gap and some of that stuff okay what is the weakness of campo i don't want to say there is a weakness in campo it's like Kempo karate, you know, it is what it is, the way, it, and then jujitsu, just like, you know, you see in mixed martial arts these days, if the guy is just a ground fighter and he doesn't have any stand-up, then uh, he goes against a, uh, somebody that's a uh, um, good stand-up fighter, then he's in trouble, or the other way around. That's why you try to kind of like mix it up, that uh, you see even some of the uh, um, best fighters in mixed martial arts, I mean, they're still going to have like... Uh, maybe jujitsu that they're more comfortable or their stand-up striking that they're more comfortable but you got to have a knowledge of both to to be able to uh, mix it up and uh, you know to be able to survive what is the weakness then of jujitsu uh well like within jujitsu like some of the amazing techniques that you see within kempo that you don't see it in jujitsu i, I was uh, i was uh, training at the uh, gracie academy and then they go through some of their stand-up techniques. Like if somebody grabs you, if somebody does this or does that, and I'm going like, uh, so I pair off with somebody and I'm doing it. And he goes like, what was that? What is that you're doing there? And I go, well, I'm doing this because I'm going to cancel your width or height. And he goes, what the heck are you talking about? So obviously, I mean, Kempo Karate is an amazing system. And a lot of the concepts that you do stand up, you could apply it with the jujitsu on the ground. So um, that's why it, it's just a, such a good uh, compliment when they uh, when they come together. What are you doing for furthering your education in Kempo? I'm learning, man. Just be a student of the art. Um, you know, uh, you 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 always got to be a student. You always got to learn because uh, you know. If, if you think that they, you know it all, and I mean, somebody could humble you real fast and uh, you go, man, after all these years, I still don't know much. And that's the truth. You, you just got to continue to learn. Well, if I'm correct, it was a year ago that you were bestowed with the, with the senior rank of Master of the Arts. Congratulations on that. Thank now you. And that was, well, I'm not the one that did that, but congratulations for you. You're the one that earned that from your peers. Now that you're a senior master of the arts, what are you learning from that? I don't know. I'm, uh, it's, um, it's a great feeling that, uh, you know, you go after all these years of uh, hard work and, uh, um, but you, you, you look at that and, 
and you appreciate it. And at the same time, you go, um, man, we've got some work to do. Uh, we still, um, there's, there's so much out there to, to learn. And, um, and which, which is the good thing. So that will keep you uh, um, all excited. I was having a hard time putting that 10th degree black belt because I was going like, you know, maybe subconsciously is, is going to tell me like, okay, and you know, now you got it. And, uh, you know, when that ninth degree, it's, it still uh, tells you that, hey, you got to push forward and, you know, continue to train and, uh, you know, uh, learn. But um, I'm sorry. When you say you're training, are you also doing academic research and education? Um, I'm more of a, uh, more of a hands-on. More of, uh, you know, I just like to uh, learn the... Uh, uh, if there are jujitsu techniques or Kempo techniques and, uh, you know, I get together with guys and train and I just like to, uh, I mean, uh, you talking about maybe like reading about stuff and, uh, well, I'm expanding uh, the knowledge of say, for example, Mr. Parker's infinite insights or any of the curriculum that you find within those volumes. Well, you know, here and there, but mainly, I remember even like uh, uh, when when it was like as as a uh, brown belt and everything, I'll be testing. And sometimes Mr. Parker's day, he'll stop the test and he goes like, uh, "Okay, in this uh, technique, uh, what do you do?" And you know, just to hear the student talk about some of the terminology and use that, the, uh, you know, to be able to speak the art also, but. He was like, Mr. Parker, you know, just watch me do the technique, watch me move and everything. <laughs> if there's any comments you want to make on that, that's fine. I, I mean, um, because um, it's important to know some of those concepts and be able to speak the arts because uh, when you want to teach it for, for the student to get a better understanding. But sometimes people get caught into too much uh, talking about things that they forget all about the, the, the actual motion and moving. So I'm, I'm more about that. Have you, the, the reason I say that is I've had, since the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame was created, I've had a, the excellent opportunity to speak some of our seniors. And some of the best conversations I've had and been insightful for me as learning uh, the academic side of, of Mr. Parker's thinking man system, uh, the web of knowledge example, eight considerations, and a few other di uh, conversations I've had um, I'm just curious, have you spoken to any of the other seniors, maybe to expand on that, to broaden your horizon, maybe that'll bring something new to the, the table for you? Um, not really, not really, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, anytime I'm having a conversation with uh, uh, any of the uh, seniors, um, you know, you, you always, they make a comment, they show a technique or they talk about something, you know, you, you, you pick on that and then you try and just pick up that couple of words that you get out of it and then apply it in anything and everything that you do. You know, I've uh, hooked up to with, with, let's say, uh, um, uh, Steve Mohammed and, uh, you know, some of the concepts that they, he talks about within uh, his way of teaching Kempo. And, and I've been working some of his concept for the past 25, 30 years. What have you um, gotten, what have you taken away from Mr. Mohammed? Um, his, his way of thinking, his motion, how like you go from a, uh, if, if, if you been a, instead of being a flat footed on neutral bow and how to, uh, uh, lift that back heel up on the back leg and uh, just some of the uh, um, motion and movements that you do, uh, you know, um, then I pick up that concept and try and apply it with a lot of the techniques that we do or, uh, you know, if it comes to um, uh, sparring and stuff. Um, you know, there there are lot lot of other people that you know. If I if I travel and I teaching seminars, and there are other instructors uh, that are teaching seminars, and they talk about things or they show them things, and you know, I like to always uh, listen and look and watch and pick it up. What is the hardest fact or or, or challenge for you uh, as an teacher or instructor trying to? 
bridge the gap between a technique or a base move into an actual freestyling move? Um, you know, when, when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, freestyling and sparring, a lot of the concepts, you know, your, your foot maneuvers, are you attacking, are you counterattacking, are you trying to hit at the same time that the, your opponent attacks? And so um, then uh, what, what happens is you're going to just pick like maybe one or two moves here and there that you've learned off of uh, some of the techniques. So we do a self-defense techniques. And if you include the endings and you got like maybe 10, 15 moves in there, uh, or uh, seven, eight, 10, 12 moves or whatever. But then you could pick one or two or three of those and uh, just uh, use it uh, in, in, uh, in sparring when you, uh, when you uh, close the gap. So uh, um, that's, that's, uh, that's basically how it is. Let me, let's move on to a different subject, seminars. You've had the opportunity over the last 30 years to do seminars around both domestically and internationally. Yeah. The most common things that come up in your seminars. With me teaching one of the most common things that, I mean, one of the comments that I hear from people that, um, I don't know, it's like they talk about that you're so easy to talk to and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, they, uh, we, just, we just have fun, you know. I, I just have fun connecting with people and uh, teach and, Basically, uh, you know, when you go to a Kempo seminar and you got most of the people that are in the seminar, they're a Kempo practitioner, then I always, you know, start with uh, what is it that you want me to teach? If you have any question, you know, bring it up. So uh, if I have an answer for you, we go over it and uh, we talk about it. Yeah, but do so, you play with a, like an agenda, like I'm going to cover certain things that are really important or do you do an advance with the person, the producer, whoever's bringing you over, they say, we'd like you to cover certain subjects. That's, that's, uh, that's uh, what I always say. What do you want me to uh, cover? What do you, if anybody has a question, let's go over that. Uh, because that's the most important. You see, there's not so much you can cover and teach if you're somewhere like uh, for like two, three, four days and teaching seminars. You know, uh, one of the best things that ever happened was uh, those, uh, the, the, uh, the tapes that I did, the VHS tapes, early 90s, that covered the uh, whole American Kempo uh, um, curriculum. Because now people have something to look at. I mean, I, I know Mr. Parkett had those books and everything, but if you weren't familiar with the motion and the timing, you know, to learn some of the techniques off of those books, it was kind of like difficult. So, uh, you know, when you actually see it, it's a, uh, it was a lot easier. So, you know, when, when I'm traveling, it's like, okay, what do you want me to uh, share with you? What is it that you want me to go over? And that's, that's basically. Uh, what's, it like, what's it like teaching a seminar, say, in Europe versus a seminar maybe South America? If you've been to South America, I'm a, I'm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I have been to Central, South America, Europe, uh, you know, uh, uh, Asia, and the, um, um, you find people all over the world that if they've spent time and if they uh, made an effort to learn, okay, I uh, remember the first time I went to Argentina, um, with uh, my uh, student friend, uh, Juan Jose Negreira, I walked into uh, his room and wall to wall up to the ceiling, there were like uh, martial arts video tapes. And so there are individuals that make the effort. They bring in instructors, they travel, they have, uh, you know, they, they, and these days things have gotten so much easier because of the internet. I mean, you could just punch in five swords and you got like a, 200 people shown to that technique. But I'm saying it, it, you find people that are really hungry and they make the effort to uh, travel and have, or have instructors come in so they can learn and get a better understanding of the art. 
I saw a video of you uh, in Europe, and it was really funny. You were teaching, and you had several several of the Kempel instructors, and uh, Reiner Schultze was there, and you were teaching. It was, and I really liked how you engaged with uh, the uh, the participants and how you made it flow. Is that normally how you? Well, explain to our viewers what I'm talking about. You know, different individuals teach differently. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I am who I am. The, the, the way I teach or the way I connect with people and uh, try and get the really comfortable and friendly and just, uh, you know, um, I don't want to go in there going like, okay, I'm an 8 degree or 9 degree or 10 degree or this and that, you know, uh, I watch your distance or... Uh, it's not all about that. I'm not like that. You know, I'll just get in there and mix it up and have fun with people. Do you try to address techniques per se the way you were taught? Or you just tie, try to tie in the general principles of what those techniques represent? Um, well, if, if they have a, a question, then I want to see what, what, who is this individual? What is he trying to do? So, you know, when I, I want to see how he does that particular technique that if, uh, if there are certain adjustments that I could uh, make and explain it to him, why I suggest this, I just explain it to him. Then he's uh, got to take it from there and move on and work on it and try and uh, make things uh, to work better for him. What's it like uh, uh, teaching a class? Well, I'm going to ask you a quick question. How many languages do you speak, Mohammed? I speak two languages, uh, English, or at least I try. And, uh, and uh, Farsi, because uh, originally I'm from Iran and uh, I speak Farsi. And, uh, you know, maybe a few words here and there, <laughs> Spanish. But uh, well, you, you, you've gone over to Russia a few times. What's it like? What's Kempo like in Russia? Um, it's, it's great. You got these few individuals that are, uh, you know, uh, teaching uh, at Parker's Camp out there. And, and I, was, I was going on a regular basis for like, uh, uh, I don't know, I want to say like uh, four or five years. And then uh, just certain things changed a little bit. And uh, as far as the, uh, I don't know, I wanna, if, if it's a relationship between United States and Russia. So uh, it, it was... Um, Kind of got a little bit uh, harder to uh, you know to travel and everything, but uh, it, it's great. It, great people. I had uh, um, a great time every year that I was going there. Also, uh, I was teaching seminars at their uh, um, international judo club, and these guys, uh, some real tough guys, uh, training doing judo, judo, and uh, um, the. Uh, um, also uh, uh, wanted to see some Kempo, and then they were also interested in seeing some uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like the uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. So we go over, but it was a lot of fun dealing with some of these big boys. Well, you deal, you're, you're obviously training in, in uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Do you get more in, uh, questions regarding that than your Kempo background, or is it equal? Say that again. Any do you have this, the questions that are presented to you, are they more or less more interested in hearing about Gracie uh, material or do they really, is there an even balance between it and say Campo? It, it all depends to, you know, to the individual. There are, more people are getting drawn into uh, learning the ground game just because they see it as it, being, uh, you know, it's necessary and you need to. Uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> You know, it, it, there, there are, I, I don't push it. You know, I tell them what I do and uh, what I like to do. And I like the combination of this two system together. And uh, if there's an individual that they have questions on Kempo and that's what they want to go over, then I'll be more than happy to uh, just go over that. And if uh, they like to see how do you mix it up, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, then I could show them some of the ground techniques and say like, okay, how you could go from, uh, from a stand-up Kempo technique into a, uh, you know, uh, jujitsu technique. In your opinion, do you believe Mr. Parker would have addressed the ground game more today? No doubt about it. He has to. 
he has no other choice. Look, look, uh, look! What's 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 happening? I mean, I do understand people that uh, they're Kempo practitioners, or uh, and and they say like we don't want to study ground technique, we don't want to study jujitsu or wrestling or judo or this and that. But if you tell me that it's not necessary or you don't need it, you you're mistaken big time. Well, I mean, you could be a good Kempo practitioner. It's like you being a good runner, okay? But you don't know how to swim, and they throw you in the pool you're in trouble so you're in trouble the answer b would run around the pool huh why go into the pool run around the pool hey sometimes you get pushed into the pool sometimes they grab you and uh, you know it's it's really frustrating because i've experienced it myself you know it's um, really frustrating that you go i've been studying kempo for like 20 30 years or whatever and you get this guy that's a jiu-jitsu guy and has been training for like two three years or whatever and he, and you know you're on the ground and you really get frustrated you really get frustrated i mean the, the mr parker would definitely would uh, uh, say like uh, you know uh, you gotta learn that stuff Okay, let's talk about, right now we're having a problem because of travel and whatnot because of COVID-19. Yeah. How, how are you overcoming that in your teaching? Well, right now, you know, I, I got some of the students that uh, whenever they have a question, you know, they just uh, send an email or call me or whatever. They have a question with a particular technique and I just tell them like, okay, let me see you do it. And uh, then we go over it. And I just video it and uh, send it to them. Uh, my school's been closed since uh, like the first week of March, and uh, right now there is no uh, there is no teaching. There is no uh, you know not going to the academy and none of that stuff is happening. But and if people got questions, uh, even before this, uh, you know. Three, four, five months ago, six months ago, yeah, I get questions all over from if it's from Europe, if it's from Central South America or United States. Somebody, you know, either call, send an email, or send a video. Go like, can you watch me do this and that? And I usually uh, respond and uh, you know help them out. I know, but what are you doing to promote your school, your teachings? Because you have to stay active, and obviously reaching out to your students. And then potential new students, because that's the lifeblood of any school. What are you doing? Are you using the social media? Uh, are you conducting any kind of uh, video to, seminars? To be honest with you, not much. Not much. Uh, you know, I'm just um, waiting for this thing to be over so uh, I could see if it could, um, you know, uh, move on and open the door and get people to come in and... Uh, there's so much you could do on the video and stuff like that. It's like people got to get into that environment. People got to come home and, uh, you know, get on the mat and start the training and start, the, you know, doing the things that we're doing. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure all the other school owners, we're just waiting for, uh, for the time that we could get back in, make the adjustment and little by little get into things. Okay. Let's, let's move on to some questions now from some of the viewers that are here. So I'm gonna go down the line. So uh, you guys uh, turn on your mics when I hit on you and we'll go ahead. Let's start out with somebody that knows you well, uh, oh, Bob White. Mr. White, are you there? Hello, Mr. White, you're live. Hey, Paul, how yes, are you? There he is. Hello, sir. <laughs> you're on, you're alive with uh, Mohammed Tabatavai. Oh, great, Mohammed. It's good to see you. Very nice. Hi, good to see you. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Doing very, very You're good. You're looking it's good great. to see you on. No, nope, I've been enjoying it. Enjoying hearing your uh, point of view on some things. It's uh, it's always welcomed and respected. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. How are you guys doing? Same thing. You know, a lot too much downtime for me. You know, I'd rather be at the school than. Uh, just yeah. waiting it out like all of us, waiting for it to change. Exactly, exactly. Thank yeah. you, Mr. White. Let's move on to Anthony. 
Capone, why don't you toss say hi to Muhammad Tabata Bai? Hello, Anthony. How you doing, buddy? Can you hear me? You're in the dark. Hey, there you are, Tony. What's happening, man? Say hello. There you go. You hear me now? How you doing? He probably doesn't remember me, but I got to pick him up at uh, one of Mr. Kelly's camps from yes, the airport. Yes, of so. course I do. Antonio, how are you? Good, sir. How you doing? All right. Uh, He's a crazy uh, man. He's a madman. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tony. Uh, I don't really have any questions. I, I, I think uh, he made some really valid points on some of the stuff he was talking about. Uh, I like what he's done with the jujitsu hey, thing. And, uh, you know, I just think it's a great thing going on. So just that's all I needed to say. No, no, I, I – take I, away from Muhammad's uh, seminar when he was down there in Florida? Well, I, like I said, I like the way he had uh, worked in the, uh, the jujitsu, you know, because I've seen a lot of people try to do it. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. I'm not a jujitsu guy myself, uh, but I do know a little bit about it and stuff. And uh, what he did looked pretty legitimate. And uh, I, I liked what he was doing. I just like the way he incorporated it. Also, just like the other day when he gave a little seminar on the Brotherhood, he incorporated a little bit of a boxing thing in one of the techniques he was doing. That's the kind of forward thinking that we need to have as we go forward. Uh, you know, instead of being too traditionalized, we need to think about uh, some of that stuff. And he's one of the leaders in the, the pack that's doing that. So I think it's pretty cool. Well, thank so, you, hey, Tony. Good, it's good to see you. I'm glad you could get on this. In about a week, coming, Tony. Thank you. In about a week, we're gonna have Marty Zanovich. Marty, how you doing? Say hello to Muhammad Tabatabai. Good. Hi, Paul. Hey, Muhammad. How are you? I can't hear him. Muhammad, we can't hear you. Is he there? Muhammad, can you hear me? Happen. Did we lose him? Let, we'll ask the question, and we'll see what happens. No, Ma, uh, it's extremely hot. Are you there, Muhammad? He must have hit a button. Well, ask the question, Marty. We'll figure uh, it out. There was no real question. I was just wondering if he uh, recovered after the time we all were at Graham's camp, and uh, my kid was jumping all over the, the beds on him. <laughs> His mic's <laughs> muted. Uh, is your, your mic is muted there, Muhammad. Let's see. We got it there. Unmute. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm hey, okay Muhammad. now. Ah, there you are. Oh, okay. Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? How's the family? Good. How, good, good. Doing good. I was wondering if you recovered after we had that uh, camp we taught at at Graham's whenever yeah. my kid was jumping all over you. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. Great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is he doing? How old He's is he now? Nine years old in about a month. Damn. All right. Thanks, Marty. Looking too. forward to seeing you in about a week, everybody. He'll be here on Saturday. Moving right along, uh, we have Zachary Carter. Zach, you have a question for uh, Muhammad. Yeah, I'd like to uh, ask, uh, do uh, Kempo uh, principles and concepts help you uh, with your groundwork? Definitely. Definitely. Both? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, when, when, when you, once you were even on the ground, you know, uh, some of those, uh, some of those concepts. If you're talking about width, depth, height, if you're talking about, I mean, motion is motion, and um, if you got to take a proper direction to make things happen, you know, it's it's the uh, same basic concept. Yeah, definitely. Moving yeah. right along, let's get on down here. We have on us. Let's see who else is next on the line, and we're gonna move right on. Somebody that Rui always loved to hear from. Uh, Senior Master of the Arts, Mr. Chuck Sullivan. Chuck, are you there? Yeah. Chuck, are you there? Can we hear you? Or is he gone? He should be on. Chuck, you there? You might be a he might be his mic. Let's go on to uh, Der uh let's go here to Derek Hibben. Derek, you there? We've yes, got sir. Yeah, okay, Derek, say hello to Senior Master of the Arts, Muhammad Taba Tabai. Hello, sir. Hi, Derek. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you are as well. Yes, we're hanging in. I appreciate all of your insights. It's always a pleasure to hear you talk. And uh, we've only met uh, the, the one time, but uh, 
I remember it. It's it, the time just goes by too fast. It seems like it was uh, yesterday. But I hope your family's doing well, and uh, hopefully the everything changes and people get back on the mat. Yeah, uh, I I don't have a picture from you, but uh, I mean, uh, no, I can't see you. I don't know why that's not happening. Muhammad, uh, uh, Derek is is part of the Hibbert <clears throat> family. There he it is. Father. Sorry, it was turned All off. right, all right. And I How believe you? Bill is on. I think Derek. I think your dad is on with he us. Is. Am I correct? Yes, he, my father, Gil Hibben, is on here. All right. Let's see if we All can right. get him just to say hello. Right, I have a question Derek. for you, Derek. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you think about me having a tattoo on my body? <laughs> <laughs> I say, why not? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. My, my, my dad said if I ever came home with one, he'd remove it himself. <laughs> So one of the first ones I came home with was the Hib and Knives trademark. All right. Oh so my God. My, my dad makes trademarks everything he makes, <laughs> and uh, I, I had that, and I came home with the uh, the universal, universal pattern, and he he approved of both. And luckily, <laughs> he didn't cut my skin off. I think God, I think God bless good, you, man. But I think you you you're running out of space, huh? I, I'm an art collector. All right. Well, hey, let me tell you something. Leave that handsome face alone. Don't put anything on it. Oh, I, I, I promised my mother. I promised, her. I promised her. All right. Excellent. You're a good guy. Let's go to Todd. Todd, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir, I am. Hello, Todd. I actually have a question. First of all, it's good seeing you again, Mr. Tabatabai. Hi, how uh, are you? We've met a few times. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually a student of uh, AC Rainey's. Yeah, uh, who's that? Daughter. Who's that? The beautiful young lady sitting next to this you. Is, this is this is my beautiful wife, Christy. Hi, Christy. She's actually, she is the oldest daughter of Sandy Sandoval. Nice. All right. Uh, so, <clears throat> so actually, my question is to you uh, because I uh, have done some of my own things with the Kempo and Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and all that stuff, hybrid integration. What? Uh, are you doing to maintain the uh, striking applications within the ground game uh, as opposed to what I see a lot of is that when people get down to the ground, they, they lose all sight of their striking applications, curves, pressure points, and so forth, and they just go straight to jiu-jitsu and forget all about all the striking. So what do you do to help maintain that ideal or do you for your students as, as a combative? Well, personally, for me, striking is, is, is like right there. It's, it's just like a, uh, like a second nature. It's, uh, you know, um, it's not something that uh, I have to think about. It. Subconsciously, it's right there. But because jujitsu is the game that I'm still, like, uh, learning more, and I'm more interested to know um, a lot more about the uh, game of jujitsu. So when I'm, when I'm rolling with somebody, whether it's a student or whether it's my instructor that I'm rolling with, um, I'm more interested in just learning the jujitsu game, the control and the, uh, the uh, how to control and how to, if, if I got to get an arm bar, ankle lock, knee lock, if I got to go for a, uh, a choke or something, uh, because um, the striking part of it is it's there. You, you kind of, you know, throw in the kick, throw in the punch, throw in the elbow, you use your forehead, you know, bite his ear or this or that. It, that stuff, that, you know, is it, there, you know. Yeah, but, but are you using that as a means of control manipulation or control maintenance to get into your next position and or choke lock in, within the jiu-jitsu game? Well, let's say if I'm rolling with a jiu-jitsu black belt or if I'm rolling with my instructor, jiu-jitsu instructor, then uh, the striking part of it, it's, it's, it's out of the game okay. because, because obviously we're doing, we're doing uh, jiu-jitsu. But sometimes, uh, you know, in, within the academy, like, uh, you know, we put pads on, like we have one guy that wear the gloves on and just do the attacks. And uh, so then we throw in the uh, striking part uh, within the game also. So if, if I say like, okay, if the guy is going to, you're going to go down to the ground and you're doing some jujitsu, but if you're going to throw some punches, let's go ahead and do that also. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, Todd. Let's go to Manuel. Uh, Manuel, let's go with Manuel uh, Goyas. Say hello to uh, Mr. Uh, Taba Tabai. Are you there, sir? Is he there? Hello. Are you there? We're not hearing from him. Okay, we'll move on to Steve Orsino. Steve, are you there? Steve Orsino, are you there? Yeah, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You're supposed to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, I'm not ready. Hey, hey, Steve, how are hey, you? Hey, Mohammed, how you doing? All right. Nice to see you. You're looking good, looking healthy. Thank I got a question you. for you. Um, so you're, 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 I looked at your website. It says American Jiu Jitsu, uh, Kempo Jiu Jitsu, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that to imply like when you teach there, have you, have you um, incorporated what you, your, the grappling knowledge you had into Kempo as, as part of the system or are they, do you teach it as an additive a list of different techniques? Uh, I'm well, just curious. Some of, the, some, of the, uh, some of the curriculum within the curriculum, let's say uh, if I have the list of Ed Parker's Kempo, but the Kempo Jiu Jitsu material, let's say for the yellow belt technique. So if, if I uh, teach a delayed sword, then I also teach, uh, so I teach one Kempo technique, then I teach a, a Jiu Jitsu technique. And then I teach like how the two could uh, mix together. Okay. Okay. Like uh, if, if I teach, uh, let's say, uh, um, um, capture twigs. Okay, then we go. The guy grabs you, and then you do capture twigs on him. But if the guy grabs you and take you down and gets on top of you, then you could bridge and roll him. Okay. okay so, so, so you learn the jujitsu technique. You learn that bridge and roll, how it's done properly. Like I don't want to say properly. Like the way, let's say, if if at the Jean Jacques Machado or uh, like uh, the Gracie Academy, if they're doing that technique then that's how I teach it. Okay, right. so it's kind of like a pure jujitsu technique. And then... So, so you teach you, you re teach it isolated, the technique's isolated, so that the student knows the base root of that, of that technique. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, I say like, okay, let's uh, just mix it up. The yeah. guy grabs you, do capture twigs. He grabs you and he takes you down and gets on top of you, and then go to bridge and roll. So you look, you're, what you're doing is you're looking for common positions that they could then blend in or move, move exactly. on to the next. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go How on. Do uh, you have good. another question there, Steve? No, that's good. Okay, good. Let's move right on. Wes Hibben, are you there? Wes, are you there? No. Yeah, one. I'm here. Oh, you are. Good. Say hello to Muhammad Taba Tabai. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Good. I have not had the opportunity to work out with you, but hopefully sometime in the future. Hopefully. It'd be my pleasure. Uh, I don't have any questions for you. I've enjoyed what you've said so far. Good, good. You know, Mohammed, the, the Hibben family are obviously well known as, as the leaders of uh, weaponry uh, you know yes, to the yes. blades and whatnot both uh, yes. eric and 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 wes are you know here with their father the father's listening on as well do you incorporate any weapon defenses or usage in your teachings me yes sir yeah i mean there there, there are some uh, there are some uh, uh you know uh, weapon techniques against knife and stakes and gun and stuff like that within american kempo and uh, you know uh, I, I go over that stuff if I got to make some changes here and there, but, um, you know, um, I focus on just the uh, Kempo as a, uh, obviously like the striking part of it. And if it's a weapon attack, yes, we go over stuff and the uh, same thing, uh, same thing in uh, Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. What about the, what about with the Jiu Jitsu? You actually have techniques for the uses uh, yeah, they, they, they have they have techniques that, that, that you know, for, for against somebody doing and coming at you with a knife or a gun or club attacks and stuff like that. But, um, you know, if, if, if somebody wants to study weapons, then I tell them like, hey, go study a Filipino system, you know, which, uh, you know, that's their bread and butter, you know, with knives and things like that. Uh, okay, let's let's go to another uh, individual. Uh, Ruben, are you there? Ruben Perea. Are you there, Ruben? 
Yeah, I'm here. Oh, say hello to uh, Senior Master of the Arts, Abba Tabai. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. I'm one of Frank Trail's black belts. All right. Yeah. Trying to come back after 30 years of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been all these 30 years? Oh, I don't know, but I wish I didn't leave. But anyways, I liked how um, your stories were when you're a white belt, yellow belt, you know, teaching with the, the belt, moving it from the front to the side. Brings me back memories when uh, Frank put me out there to start teaching when I was an orange belt. Yeah. So it makes, those were challenging times when they put you out there in the ring or to show people what to do. And you're like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I never, I never just like to put the belt in the, uh, uh, on the side. That's why when I opened up my own school, you know, uh, everybody wears their belt in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. move over to uh, uh, Dennis Kadatser, senior master of the arts. Dennis, say hello to Muhammad Taba Tabai. Are you there, sir? Are you unmuted? There we go. Hello, Dennis. Hey, Mohammed, how are you doing? Hi, Dennis. How are you? I'm good. It's uh, good to see you. You know, good you're you. uh, uh, doing well. I, 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 uh, I'm impressed with uh, a lot of your views. You know, very similar to uh, what I say. You're saying some really good stuff. It's a very uh, comprehensive and practical chemical applications. It's good to see that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So how it's, are things uh, with you? Everything good? Everything's all right. Just hanging in there. Just uh, trying to get out of jail here, you know. So it's uh, yeah, it's a struggle. We lost you, Dennis. You went mute on us. You hit a button. It's uh, impressive. You know, one thing I I haven't seen uh, that I that I like that you do is the wooden dummy stuff. Uh, I find uh, I find it very interesting. You're very good at it. Yeah, that wooden dummy, uh, I, I brought it into the academy, just a tool for me to practice. Because within Wing Chun, if there's like the, those 100, 115 moves that the, you, you practice, then I just start applying and some of the strikes that you do within Kempo's techniques and stuff like that. And uh, just applying some of the uh, fundamentals, if it's your parrying, if it's your blocking, and just using the wooden dummy because you won't complain. And um, and doing some of the techniques, so uh, that that was just a tool for me to uh, to practice. And then some of my students, more like advanced students, then uh, they wanted to learn. So uh, I'll just show it to them. Yeah. Well, they, apparently, French Century has a new uh, bob out with arms and legs. Yeah. And uh, so I I haven't worked on that or seen it, but uh, I hear it's real good. But uh, you know, talking about you know going from jujitsu to kempo, I find. Uh, exactly what you say is right. Once you're in there, it depends on what game you're playing. If you're playing a jujitsu game, you kind of focus on jujitsu and not so much on the other stuff. But I find that I can't help but look at opportunities. If I was doing something or I wanted to strike, they just happen to cross your mind. If you're really into it, you, you can't get it out of there. It, it's it's so stuck in there that you see those opportunities. And I'm sure you you uh, see the same thing, or do you? Oh, you mean striking, like at the time that you're grappling? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's always there. It, it's like uh, when you mount someone and you get on top of them and uh, you're trying to control the situation, then the heel palm drop and the elbow drops. I mean, it's always there. So the, the, the striking, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's always there. It's, and it's good stuff. Yeah, I can't. I, I know I can't. Uh, I, I, I can't turn my brain off. You know, you're just there and you see it. If you see an opening, you see an opening, you know, and I'm sure Bob White's the same way. When we condition ourselves so much, uh, but you got to keep paying attention to the game you're, you're doing. But if you go into an MMA ring, you know, all, all systems are off. You got everything going. You know, if the guy's shooting on your legs, you yeah. know, you got to. You got to be able to react, but but anyway, I, I won't talk much longer. But it, it's great to see you. I'd like to get to know you better. This has been a great uh, tool to get to know some insights for you because uh, we haven't really done anything together at all. So I'm really appreciative for uh, Paul uh, doing this with this forum. I think he's doing a great job, and he's bringing people out and, and introducing people to people that haven't had a chance maybe to see each other and, and get to hear a little bit about what they what they're all about. Yeah, well, it's good to see you, and hopefully in the future we'll hook up and have some fun. Oh, that'd be awesome.
All right. Best wishes, man. Thank you, you Dennis. All right. You know, Mohammed, let's let's talk about a few more things before we close out. Um, what is your vision for the future of what you're teaching in your school? Um, you know, there are a lot of people that they, they, they say like, well, I study with Ed Parker. I study with this guy. I study with that guy. And I'm going like, that doesn't mean nothing. You know, what's important, like what you study, what do you do with it? Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, this generation of martial artists, they just have so much tools. The information is just so much information there and it's in, it's available to them. So, I mean, I just see uh, um, a bright future, whether it's in Kempo community, whether it's in Kempo jujitsu, or whether it's a jujitsu or any system. If, if you're an individual and you're hungry and you wanna uh, learn and get better at, at what you like to study, you know, the tools are there and uh, it, it's, it's, it's great, things are looking good. Well, I'm excited that you could be a part of this today. That really meant a lot to us all. My and, pleasure. Uh, before we go, why don't you tell them again your website and how to get in touch with you? Well, just type in Mohammed Tabatabai and you get a hold of me. Send send an email and uh, you know give some love. <laughs> or, or go to your website. Always, you know the American. Yeah, the, the website is the no. American Kempo Jiu Jitsu uh, dot com, and. Um, well, I would say, everybody, if you have a chance, it's now your time to say goodbye to Muhammad. It has been a pleasure. With that, Muhammad, as I've said earlier, you're going to enjoy Muhammad, the next part as we say goodbye. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Muhammad. Good seeing you. All right. All right, brother. Take care. Take all care, right. brother. Take care. All right. This Take is Paul care. Casey on behalf of the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame. Thank you Thanks, so very Paul. much. We look forward to seeing you at our next next seminar educational video. So God bless. Be safe. Take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Paul. Thank you.